good morning everyone so nice to see all of you here uh, it, it's a full house so that always makes us happy so i am samir durde uh, from ayuka the inter university center for astronomy and astrophysics and i welcome you all to the first lecture in this every uh, yearly series of second saturday lectures and demonstrations also okay so uh, we are here uh, we've been doing this series for uh, more than 30 years now and every uh, year we get a lot of prominent scientists people who uh, do research people who study science and uh, they have a methodology they have a way of doing their research and they research various aspects of nature and what you learn in school is someday hopefully also going to be uh, something which leads you to do this kind of research as well so to give you a first hint first glimpse of uh, a scientist's mind, a scientist's work. We uh, uh, bring them to you on this platform through this series called the Second Saturday Lectures. So that's a background for that. And uh, at Ayuka, we also have a lot of other outreach programs, which I will announce to you uh, sh at the end of the talk. But uh, we are eagerly waiting for the first talk today, which is uh, to be given by our director, Professor Sri Anand. And uh, he's an uh, Indian astronomer, astrophysicist, cosmologist, uh, person who's been working in this field for many years since the beginning of Ayuka, he's been with it. And uh, he has studied uh, things which are close by and very, very far off, like galaxies uh, far off in the universe. Now, today he's here to explain to us in simple words, a uh, method that he uses for finding out more details about these far off galaxies and a method which is in general also used by uh, many scientists in many other fields. So to uh, tell us about uh, decoding our universe through spectroscopy, let us uh, welcome Professor Sri Anand. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. You can hear me, right, without echo. Hello? Yeah. Good morning. So today I'm going to shall we switch off this? Okay. Uh, today I'm going to discuss what is known as astronomical spectroscopy. I understand that you are all in school, so you would not have done any detailed uh, physics. So I will try to explain to you in a simple way. The idea behind all this exercise is that when you look at the sky, you see these objects, right? Night sky, you see stars and what and what not. And if you look at the pictures taken by uh, telescopes, you find interesting features in the sky. Unfortunately, we cannot go there and touch and see. See, in laboratory, what happened? If I give a stone to you, you can rotate it, touch it, and you can break it and see what is inside and all. In astrophysics, what happened? We cannot go there. Okay? You know, it, it took so much time for Chandrayaan to reach, our rocket to reach moon, which is the nearest object. It took, how many days it took? Remember? So many days, no? It was just going for several months before reaching there. So it is impossible for us to go to any astrophysical object and look at it and try to see what is there, why it is like this, what can we say about it, okay? So astronomers have devised various methods by which you sit here, you don't go there, okay? You don't go there, you don't touch or do something. By doing some special experiments, they are able to understand various things about our universe itself. So I am going to just walk you through simple ideas of uh, what is spectroscopy. You see them every day. So you have to understand basic ideas. Then I will develop. Say I have assumed that you will be able to follow what I am saying in case you see that I am saying something which is which is slightly going above your head. You just tell me so that I can give you explanation which is much simpler. Okay. Spectroscopy is very simple. The idea, first idea we have to see that any light which we see here or sun or something, they look like white color. But we know that the white color doesn't mean that all, if you, if you, all the light which is coming from there has only one color. Actually, mixture of all colors together will make a light look like white. 
Okay, is it true or not? So we have seen the example. The example we see in real life, a rainbow. Okay, we have seen the rainbow. Rainbow, you see this color, whatever, violet to red, and you need the orientation where how it has to be. Some rain should be there, some cloud should be there, sun should be behind. Sun is behind. When you look at uh, uh, in the evening or in the morning, when there is going to be rain, you will find this rainbow. So when you start with sunlight, sunlight has all the things together. Everything is mixed up. This light enters into a droplet. So is it one of the things you will learn in uh, in optics when you see how the light goes through something. When a light goes from some air into a glass, it will not go straight. It will turn. Okay. This is this bending will happen. So, and interesting thing is that not all the light will bend by the same way. The blue color light will bend slightly less compared to the red color light. Okay. Because of this, what happened when you are entering here, everything is coming together. When you enter here, one will bend more compared to the other. Okay. And what happened? This light will go and reflect again, and it will come out of the come out of this drop, water drop. There is a water drop. You are going from here, you enter into the water drop. You are going from something which is less into something which is big. Actually, you can see this. If you go to swimming pool, you, know, you put a ball in some place, it will appear as if it is displaced like this. You have seen this? The swimming pool may sida nahi dikta hai kuch bhi. Right? It depends on, and in fact, you can make an experiment. You can take different color balls, you will find that they will appear displaced little differently. This is the idea here. Okay. So other way of saying is that suppose imagine we have we have made this, you are all going to a cricket match or you are going to cinema hall. What they have done is that just to mediate the crowd, they have constructed small, small uh, 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 gates. Okay. Then what happened? The gate which is narrower, only thin people will go through. The gate which is broader, only bigger people, everybody can go, but preferentially bigger people will go. So if you ask all, the whole crowd to go, and if you keep this kind of entrance there, and you will clearly see the segregation of people. So the thinner people will be in one side, bigger people will be in the other side. Okay. So this is the kind of thing light can do when light goes through a simple medium into a thick medium. Thick medium can be water, thick medium can be mirror. So this is what you see examples. It could be oil also. This is the example you see in the road. Na? Have you seen in the road when you, in a rainy day, when you go, you will see these colors in some part of the road. Do you understand what it is? It is basically, it happens because there is a thin layer of water or oil spread in the surface. The same thing happened to the light which is coming from outside. When it's entered the oil, blue color and red color will will deviate differently. It cannot go through the road, so it will come back to you. When it comes back, it will come at different, different angles. So it will appear as if you have different colors. So now the question again you have to ask, whether the colors are produced by oil, or colors are nothing but the light which has been deviated into different colors by this oil. How do you check? You just go with a, in the same place where you are seeing this oil spill. If you cover yourself with a blanket completely and see, you will not see any light. Any color will not be there. These are the experiments you can do in your house. The same thing you will see if you, have, if you go to garden and if they do the sprinklers going around. You can see every time. So again, this is the example here. If you have a sprinkler going here and you stay behind, uh, your sun is behind, sprinkler is going here, you will see nice pattern. You ask your friend to see in the other, stand in the other side. He or she will not see this pattern. Whereas you will see at a particular angle. So clearly what I'm trying to say is that all the colors and other things we are seeing in this kind of thing is nothing but we are seeing the light from sun only. Okay, we are not seeing it from anything else. This water is not producing light, water cannot produce light. So this is the first idea. The first idea is that any light you can think of can be spread into light at, as a function of color. This color in physics goes by the name wavelength. Okay, we will keep calling it as lambda or whatever. Wavelength is what we need to know. So you understand, right? any object you look in the sky can be split, that light coming from that object can be split into these colors. Okay, good.
So this is what it is, but actually the light covers huge range. It is not only the range what we are seeing. So you know that you have X-rays, you go and take X-rays, na? Like that in, in sky also there are X-rays, right? You can also as radio, we, have, we are listening to radio. So the object in the sky can emit light or emit signals in any wavelength, okay? Any region. It can emit signal in radio. That's why GMRT is there. You hear about GMRT? GMRT is there to detect the signal like what we hear from radio, okay? So this is the idea here. The first thing you have to remember is that any light, any signal coming from any object can be spread into wide range of color in place where we can see. It can be spread into wide range of frequencies like the way we tune our radio, okay? The frequency wavelength and all are there. So that's the first thing to remember. The second thing to remember is suppose this bulb is there. So I have a bulb. I just take a piece of, okay, you can take your mobile, okay? Go close to the bulb and take a picture. So mobile pura, it will be fully kind of this thing. You can keep, imagine this is your mobile phone's photo. You keep moving out, the object, that light will become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. You understand why? Because basically what happened, if I am here, anything I send, I will send in all direction. Suppose if I have 100 people, I am going to send 100 people in all direction. So if you come and cover them with this, you will detect all 100, you can catch all the 100 people. So with, with this much circle, suppose imagine that I draw a circle from center, I send 10 people. If you are standing here, it is most likely that you will catch two or three people, okay? But if they are spread out, they, each one of them run 100 meters and I try to catch, it is most unlikely that I will catch any one of them because they have spread over a large distance. This is what happened to any light or any signal coming from an object. If you are very close, the object will appear bright. If you go, if the object is further away and further away, they will appear faint. This is the thing you have to understand also. The first thing you are saying is that any object you look at will be split into colors, right? That is, that is just to how they are spread in the, this thing. But how strong they are depends on how much closer these objects to us. Okay, this is another thing you have to just remember. These are all lo simple logic only. Now you are following whatever I'm saying. So this is the problem for us. If you want to detect a distant object, it is going to be difficult because more and more distance, the object will become fainter and fainter and fainter and fainter, then it, it is going to be the thing. The third point which I have not mentioned here, but it is also important for us, is that in this room there is no problem. I am speaking, you are immediately hearing. Suppose if I go and uh, go and sit in sun and send a light towards, a light pulse towards you, a signal to you, how much time it will take for that signal to reach you? Huh? Yeah, yeah, six or eight. It's minutes or second. So you see, it is very far. So if I go and simply switch off the sun, I go and switch off the sun, will you know immediately now? No. So this is another point you have to remember. Objects which are near to us will be brighter and we will know how it is recently, not even today, recently. The nearest star, it will take one or two years for light to come to us, okay? From nearest star. Nearest galaxy, it will take one followed by eight zeros that many years, okay? So you know like whatever we are seeing in the sky is too huge. It's too big, okay? Compared to any scale we can think of, these are very big. So three things we have learned now. One is that any light will be split into colors. Second thing we learned is that if the object is nearby, it will appear brighter. The same object will appear fainter when it is far away. So you look at an object, in, 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 in our case, we can easily say, na, if, uh, if I give you two bulbs, one is faint and another is big, you will say that the bright, you will say that that bulb has a higher wattage here. But in astronomy, it is very difficult to decide. If I find an object which is faint, you can say, okay, its energy is less, because it is faint, or you have to say it may be bright, but it is far away from us. So these two options are there, okay? The second thing is that when the object is far away, further the object is, it is going to take more time for you to decide what happened in that object. So you are actually seeing what happened in the past. So now I will introduce you, I am not going to go into, we will not do a lot of details, but we will do simple 
things which we have done in our day-to-day -day life. So you would have seen this, people making a knife or people making whatever this, uh, uh, molds with, uh, with iron. What they do, they heat the iron, okay? Iron will reach some 800, 600, 700 Kelvin temperature and then they start beating it to get the shape. But when you look at it, you see something. The person is holding the rod here. That means that place cannot be very hot, correct? If it is very hot, it will, you will die basically, right? 800 Kelvin, you will not survive. 800 degrees centigrade, you will not survive, okay? That's what it is. So clearly, one thing which is clear, you look at this color, color is changing. It is very dark, pitch dark here. It's very bright here. So first thing is that we know this is hot and this is cold. So hot and cold will, will reflect itself in the form of colors, okay? How an object looks, it will be directly related to how hot it is, okay? So this in physics goes by the name black body radiation. So if even if you don't know, it goes by the name black body radiation. The idea is very simple. When an object is extremely bright, it will appear in a extremely hot, it will appear in a different color compared to when it is cold. In fact, it is counterintuitive. If I ask you to draw something very hot, you will plot something red, right? This is what we have been told, red hot. But actually the hottest is blue, extremely hot. In, 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 in energy wise, if you see in physics, the object which like bluer and bluer will be much hotter compared to object which look redder and redder. So this is just our visual. So you can uh, just to do this exercise, this, this what is done here is that, here what I am plotting is wavelength. Wavelength means, uh, at uh, lower wavelength means towards blue, higher wavelength means towards the red, red in color, okay? What is plotted here is the brightness, how bright, the, the y-axis here. So you have known this xy plots, you have done this, distance versus velocity and things like that. So this side is wavelength and this side is, you can think of like brightness for our purpose. So if you take this curve, what it tells you is that if you are going below this wavelength, you will not see anything from this object. Starting from here, if you go, it will keep going up and there will be a peak and it will come down. This is predicted from basic physics. If, if you take a gas and gas it at some temperature, what will be the radiation? It will come, it was predicted by Planck, okay? So you, you know this uh, bl uh, uh, black body radiation. This is well known and you will study, if you end up doing physics, you will derive these equations and study what happens and why it is coming and all. As far as we are concerned, we believe that these scientists have done a good job and they have plotted this curve for different temperatures, only that much. So what do you see? This is plotted for 7,000 Kelvin. This is part, plotted for 6,000 Kelvin. You know what is Kelvin, na? Okay, good. So you can clearly see there, if I tell you, there are two things which is happening di directly. One is that when the temperature is high, that if I ask you what is the area under this curve, how much area is covered by this curve, it is large compared to the area. Suppose if I just take all the things below this curve, this 7000 curve has lot more area, okay? The first thing you are seeing is that higher the temperature, the area under the curve will be larger, okay? Area under the curve is nothing but total energy. How much energy you receive from the object depends on the area under this curve. The first thing we notice is that when the temperature is larger, you will have more energy coming from this object. Second thing is that when the temperature is larger, the peak is towards lower wavelength. See, you take the peak here. It, it is here something like 4,000 something, 400 nanometers. If it is 5,000, the peak is somewhere here. If it is 7,000, the peak is somewhere here. What is the meaning of peak? Peak means that is where the maximum light from this object is coming, okay? So now if the object is very bright, that means it is very hot, where the light comes, where the maximum energy is coming, you see maximum energy is coming from the bluer side compared to the redder side. So this is the first thing we learned. First thing we learned from simple thing is that if you take a star, if you take a star like this object, star is at some temperature, and if it is emitting radiation, and if you are going to look at it, what you will see will depend upon where the peak is. If the peak is at bluer side, the star will be very bright, and the star will produce lot of energy, okay? And it will be at higher temperature. You're understanding this? I'm just giving you example. This example you have already seen. This is, you can have an object will emit in different light depending upon what is the temperature. You have seen, but you cannot compare these two because this is slightly different physics. I just gave an example for what to look at. Don't compare it with this. Why are we doing this? 
we are just doing it because this is the photograph of a region in sky where lots of stars are there. Are they looking same color? Some of them look yellowish, some of them look red here, if you look at it, some of them look blue. So what does it tell you? The stars don't have the same temperature, they have range of temperature, okay? The first thing we learnt is that stars have range of temperature, okay? So let's see what else we can learn from this simple uh, physics we have learnt. So before going that, I wanted to say few things to you so that we will set up our physics correct, okay? This, this is one of the tricky thing, afterwards it will be just photos and we will go through. So first thing we learnt is that you take a hot light, pass it through prism or whatever, this we have already seen. Any place where the light enters from low density to higher density and come back out, you will start creating these colors. So we have seen it. So this is what is known as continuous, continuous light. You remember, this is what you have to remember. Any light you see going from violet to red, it is continuously there. Color is changing continuously. So this is one kind of light you will see. That is the example is that when the body, when the object is hot, it will emit radiation in all wavelengths. This is called continuous. Continuous means all wavelengths you see them, okay? The second set of things you will see is that in some cases, you will see these kind of lines, okay? I will show you examples. It is not continuous. Suddenly you see some lines appearing. So you, you will see the demonstration later on when you do after my talk. So what are these lines? Lines means what? There are photons, but they have only one wavelength. If you have photons with all wavelengths, some of them will be in blue, some of them will be in red. So it will be all mixed, okay? It is like our, this thing now, if you say that, look at this room, I want to look at the distribution of heights of people. So chota log bhi honge, tall people will also be there, but there will be no difference, na? continuously it will be there. But I put a box, again, same experiment, I put a box. This box will allow only people with the height of one meter, people with exact height of two meter, and that's it, or 1.5, okay, two is too large, 150 centimeter, or 100 centimeter, exactly you have to be there, okay? And you come in, now I ask you the distribution of people, you'll have only two branches, one set of people who are only 100 centimeter high, another set of people who will have 100, 150 centimeter high, correct, you understand? When you take the distribution of heights of all of you, this is called continuous distribution. But I put some restriction. I say that only people who fit into my gate can go in. Who can fit in? Either 150 centimeter or 200 centimeter. If I put the, uh, put the distribution, you will find only two groups will be there. There will be nobody with 130 centimeter. There will be nobody with 80 centimeter, okay? So this is what is known as line in, in spectroscopy. So how do you do this? How do you do this packing? How do you say you should be only at this height? Like the way I said, how do you say? This happens in, if you want to understand a little bit about atoms. Do you, have you heard what is, what are atoms? Yes. What are atoms? You have a nucleus and you have an electron. This is the smallest constituent of any of the objects we can think of at our scale. Of course, nucleus itself is not, meaning atom itself is not a constituent. You will have further divisions there. So what do you understand? If you take a hydrogen atom, I will have a proton and an electron going around. Is, is that a picture you have learnt? Yes. But actual hydrogen atom is like our buildings, right? You know uh, our 20-storey uh, buildings. The hydrogen atom is exactly like that. It is not like uh, the picture you have to visualize is like this. So you are, your house is the atom, you are the electron. So you can decide where you want to be. You can decide in the ground floor, you can go to the first floor, you can go to the second floor, okay, fine. This is the experiment, don't do it. If you are in the first floor, you jump, what happen? You, you fall down, but why do you fracture your leg? You release some energy, right? Do you understand this way? No, no. You can take a stone, throw it down from there, you don't fall, <laughs> throw a big stone, what happened? Wherever the stone falls, it will create a small crater. Why? Why? Because, second question you have to ask, how will I go from ground to the first floor? I have to do some work. Either I am fit, so I run to the top, or I am unfit, so I use electricity and go by the lift. 
So the idea atoms are like that. Okay. If you want an electron to sit in the ground ground layer, the ground level, it will sit there without any problem. But if you want it to go to the first level, you have to give some energy. Okay. So this is what is called absorption. Absorption means if you send a light with an energy exactly the energy between two levels, this light will be absorbed and the electron will go to that level. It is exactly like you use some electricity to go from ground to the first floor. Okay? But to come back from there to down, it is easy, you have to just jump. Okay? So when you jump, you release some energy. Okay? This is what happens in atom. Whenever an electron jumps from the higher state to the ground state, it will emit one photon. Whatever is the energy separation between them, that will come as a light. But this is a fixed height. The energy will be fixed. Exactly like the way I said, when you go, only 150 centimeter will go. Okay? So whenever emission happens, because an electron is jumping from one layer to another, it will happen at one wavelength. It cannot happen in all wavelengths. This wavelength is decided by what atom? you are dealing with. You understood? So we, any spectrum, anybody is going to show you, you can now decide in three ways. First thing is that you will just look at whether the spectrum is smoothly distributed. Then you will plot brightness as a function of color and where the peak comes, you will say this is the temperature. Okay, fine. But then you, so some of you will tell me, no, 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 there I am also finding lines. The lines are coming at particular wavelength that means lines are coming with particular energy. That means they belong to particular atoms. Okay? So whenever you find the line, you know that there are atoms which are present. In these atoms, like the way we keep going up and down in the lift, okay, we always come back also in the lift, but you can jump also. Okay? In atoms, they jump. They don't come back in the lift. Okay? So this is what is happening. So if you see emission line, what do you mean by that? First thing you will realize is that there are atoms which are present. Second thing you'll re realize is these atoms, electrons are jumping from top to bottom like that. So I should go slightly fast because I'm going slow like this. So how to make it go up? To make it go up, some, somebody has to lift. Whenever you are lifting something, there will be absorption. Okay? So if you see absorption, what you know? Something is going from ground to the top. When you see emission, what you know? Something is coming from top to the bottom. So this is what is the simple experiments one do. If you, if you look at a, a, a star directly, you will find a continuous spectrum. If you look at a star, if you look at a star through a gas, because this gas, the starlight can make all the electrons go from ground to the top, because they can push the electrons. This light, when it comes towards you, you will find these photons are missing, because the photon coming from these stars are used to lift these electrons to higher levels, because of that they will not be seen. So you will see them in absorption, or if you look at it directly, the electrons which go gone up, they will come down and give you emission. So these are the three signals you should see. Of course, I'm giving an example. So this tells you if it is hydrogen, you will have these lines. This is laboratory. And, uh, and neon, you will have these lines. You know which wavelength they have, they have to come. This is for argon. So you know, if we find a line at a particular wavelength, you know whether it is hydrogen, whether it is carbon, whether it is calcium or magnesium. So first thing we learned, two things we learned. We can measure temperature of the star. We can also look at the spectrum to decide whether there are absorption and emission. When you find absorption and emission, you can actually decide how many of them are jumping from, jumping from top, how many are going from bottom to top. Okay? Then you can also have the composition. What kind of composition they have? Do they have calcium? Do they have sodium? Do they have hydrogen? Okay? Do you have, are you with me till now? Okay, so good. Let's go fast now. Now we are, we are very, we are into good mood now. So, Next experiment we do is to look at the sun. Sun is very whitish in color during the mid midday. It is red in the in the early morning or in the evening. Why? Do you remember? Huh? So if you go to a very clean place, will you see red color sun? Absolutely clean place. Huh? You have to think about it. Okay, so this is basically what happens. You are, you, are, you are sitting in the surface of earth somewhere. When the sun is here, sunlight goes through bit of large volume of atmosphere. If you have dust in the atmosphere, what does dust particle do? They scatter the light. 
they scatter blue light much more compared to the red light so when you when you see this one you will see the red color of course this is why we are using red color for stopping right you re remember that because red color gets scatter less so the idea here is even though we studied about any object which is emitting high temperature low temperature electrons going up and down there is one more effect you have to worry about the effect is that star is somewhere the starlight is going to pass through all the things between us and the star so you have to experience all the effect we see in real life in this also so some stars may go through situation like this they will appear red some stars may go through situation like this they will appear blue so interesting depending upon temperature the stars can appear blue or red the same star can appear red or blue depending upon what is the kind of material which is present between us and all so already i have given you a basic idea between how you can look at you only thing you have to do is that take the light coming from star or any object in the sky and split it into colors once you have done that you will be able to do lot of things first of all you can say how hot it is second thing you can say that how many atoms are excited up and down and you can also say whether atoms are present in between that object and all whether they are making it red or blue in the sense that whether they are dust particle hanging around or there is nothing pure vacuum okay so this is this is extremely powerful right whatever i i am telling you it looks very simple but it's extremely powerful you have not gone there and you will do this okay so let us see this experiment okay so this i already told you uh, i will skip so let's do this experiment how we are going to probe this this is the spectrum of sun is actual spectrum of sun this yellow color is the spectrum of sun taken outside our atmosphere okay and the red color is the spectrum taken from ground why these two things are different the sun is sun only na you understand this thing should be same na yellow yellow is the you just go outside our earth's atmosphere take the spectrum of the sun you get this so what is the difference why there is a difference this place you see there is no light coming from sun in this place why because water molecule in our atmosphere completely absorbs sun's light the first thing we learned from here is that what kind of composition our atmosphere has you see here is the carbon dioxide water molecules and here is the oxygen oxygen 3 molecule o2 molecule o3 molecule so first exercise in studying sun we realized is that sun spectrum will appear different whether you are inside or outside the difference is mainly caused by atoms which are present in our atmosphere you are with me okay good the second thing is that you can now take the solar spectrum which is taken outside and fit it with the with the curve which i showed you before okay what did we say we have to see where the peak comes so look at the peak where it is and you can calculate the temperature will be around 5300 centigrade okay 5300 which will be 5500 kelvin okay so that's the kind of temperature so first thing we learnt is that solar light has a temperature which is correspond to 5000 or 6000 whatever you are interested in so it is it is the kind of temperature one see but now if i what i do is that i go and take a small region and make a very good quality spectrum means like i am going to divide colors into minute detail and look at how the spectrum looks like of sun of course which you can see even if you go to sunlight whatever i am going to show this is what it is it is blue here and red here okay is this the spectrum is split and arranged like this for your visualization what are you seeing now you are seeing something these dark 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 lines which are here do you see them so actually when you look at solar spectrum people found that there are lines which are present there are absorption lines which are seen in the spectrum of sun so what is the idea of absorption lines then just now i told you is it going from ground floor to first floor or first floor to <laughs> ground floor <laughs> to first floor okay so if you want to produce absorption means another thing you have to remember is i am sending photons towards you there is something in between where all the electrons are sitting in the ground floor they use this photon to go to the first floor 
but these photons, because these photons are used to lift the electron to the this thing, they will not come towards you. Understand? So this is why when you find dark lines means these are the photons which are removed. Why they are removed? They are removed because the atoms use it to go from ground floor to the first floor. So then immediately you are very imaginative people. What is the conclusion you can draw about sun? You can draw interesting conclusion about sun that is to produce absorption line there should be one layer of gas where atoms are sitting in the ground floor which means the gas has to be cold because if it is hot the electrons will go up. If you have lift you will go up correct. So this is the idea. So that means the sun even though we measure temperature of 5500 Kelvin it cannot be at one temperature. If everything is at one temperature why there will be absorption. So you should have some region where the photons are created and they are going through a gas where the photons are absorbed by atoms. So this is what given us the idea of what is sun. Based on this kind of analysis I am giving you one example but this is not sufficient you have to do lot more. What we understood is that sun, sun has a temperature of 5500 Kelvin or 5600 Kelvin. But if I go a little inside it will be hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter because how do we know? Only when you come from hotter region to cooler region you will be pumping electron from ground state to the excited state. So this leads us to the interesting aspect that sun is not a body with single temperature it is a body with multiple temperature that is the first thing. Second thing is that once you measure the temperature you will ask an interesting question. See this is how astronomers ask question. If you just see it ah achha hai nahi hota hai. You have to ask question. Now we know that if I take a balloon or if I take some gas you know, if I heat it what will happen to the gas? Heat means it will start spreading. Another example if I take a balloon and blow air into the balloon it has a shape but balloon is so stressed if I put a small hole the whole thing will go. The question people started asking if I take this much gas and keep it at this high temperature why it is not going away? It should go na? Gas will just go. Why it is not going away? So this is the question first they measure temperature. Once you measure temperature you can say how much force it has to go out. Hmm? You have done that. Now why it is not going? Sun looks exactly same for us. It looked exactly same 100 years back. What is the problem? So somehow like the balloon was holding the gas somehow something should hold this gas together so that it did not expand to big region. So that is done by what is holding the gas together? Gravity that is it. So that is what is the model we built. The model we built is that you put the gas outside gas should be slightly low temperature so that any radiation coming from inside will go and produce absorption. But you should also have gravity which is holding them in shape. So in technical term this goes by the name hydrostatic equilibrium. Okay. So we will, so I just give an example see just looking at one spectroscopic data we are able to draw conclusions about what is the structure and asking one more question what is the stability we are able to build the whole picture of sun. Okay. I will stop here because my talk is not on sun I will, uh, I am already going bit slow we can go further. The next concept I want to introduce is what is known as Doppler shift. See this is interesting problem we heard it now when train comes towards us the pitch of the sound goes up whoo, it goes right whistles and all. So what we know is that in astrophysics or in real life we know that if there is a light source which is emitting light towards you you detect these lines okay. If the source started moving very fast towards you you will find that the light will move towards a higher energy or lower wavelength. So this is this has been noticed this is just a simple effect of uh, 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 relativistic motion a uh, simple motion. So any object which emits light if it moves towards you if it if it has a red color light it will appear bluer okay. So this is this is what is known as Doppler effect. Doppler effect means if an object move towards you the wavelength will shift towards the bluer side if the object move away from you the wavelength will shift towards the redder side. So this is what is depicted here. So if, uh, if so this, this shift object which is moving what I mean in words we can explain like this. Suppose this is the spectrum you imagine this uh, dot dark lines are the absorption produced by some atom okay. 
if the same region is moving towards you, is moving towards you, this is what will happen. Instead of lines being here, they will appear slightly in the lower wavelength side. So that's the thing. So it's interesting for us. So what we have to do is very simple. You take a star. If the star is moving towards you, all the lines will, if the star is stationary with respect to you, all the lines will be in the place where you expect it to be. If the star is moving towards you, the lines will move towards the blue color. If the star is moving away from you, they will go towards the red color. Even if you follow, let's remember this, moving towards us, towards blue, moving away from us towards red. Is that fine? Shall we move on? If you understand this, we can understand a lot of things. Okay. The first thing is related to binary. There are 50% of the stars in our uh, galaxy, they are not single. They usually have a companion. There are two of them going around each other. So imagine something is going around. So when it is here, it will go towards you. When it comes here, it will go away from you. Okay? So this is how it is. So if they produce lines, this is what it is. There are two stars. Okay. So this is the standard line. There are two stars. Because one star is at rest, another star is moving. You will see that when, the, when both the stars are rest, they produce lines at the same place. So you should see only one line. When a star comes here and moves towards you, this line will split into two. One is at the same place, another will move towards the blue. When it comes here, it will be again, both are at the same location. So you will have no problem. When it comes here, it is moving towards, away from you. So you, this is very interesting. This star, if you take spectrum, at one point only one line will be there. Afterwards, you will see that another line will appear, which will move like this and join. Next time it will move in the other direction and join. You can, that's what is shown here. You take with single line, it split into two, it becomes single, it split into two, it becomes single. So every time a star go around, you don't see it. Actually, if you go and look at a star, you cannot decide whether there are two stars or only one star is there, you cannot decide. But when you take the spectrum and keep taking it, one time you will find only one line, Next time you will find two lines. After some time it will become one line. After it becomes two. So now you can detect binary stars, right? This is the this is the first time we detected binaries. The idea of detecting binaries is that the fact that one is going around the other, we will be able to actually find masses because this motion is like our Kepler's law, Kepler's motion. The way planets move around Earth, exactly the same physics is applied here. So you can calculate, you can detect whether a star is single or binary to this technique. Of course, this technique can go even further. If you, if you know that you have a very precise way of measuring the wavelength, something else can happen. So imagine there is a star here, a planet is going around. So what planet does, planet is very small, it doesn't do much to the star. But still, the star will not be in the same place, star will wobble little like, like this, because the planet is going around. Like the way, it's not correct, but like the way the waves happen in our sea, that's because of tidal effects, but I'm giving analogous. It's not exactly same. A planet is here, a pull will be towards this way. If it is in the other side, pull will be towards the other way. So what happened? Stars started moving like this, very little. But if you can detect them, then we can say whether there is a planet going around a star or not. So what principle you are using here? Principle you are using is that there are two principles which you understood today. Absorption or emission line means atoms which are going from ground state to the excited state. Second thing is that that line will come at only one place because it is fixed by which atom you are in. But it can have a small motion depending upon whether the emitting object is moving towards you or it is moving away from you. Okay? Any, if it is stationary, you will find the wavelength something. If it start moving up and down, you will see this wobble. This is what is shown here. But look at the, this is meters per second. This is very difficult to do such experiments. So this can be done. So I give an example of how to find uh, binaries. We have given an example of how to find a planet. The next example, which is interesting, this is the galaxy. Now we are going to the slightly different, this thing. So what you do is that here is the galaxy. You have seen these galaxies, right? You have looked at them. So you go to different, different, see this is the center of the galaxy. As you go out, you are going outside the galaxy. So what is shown here is that you go to different locations and take the spectrum, okay? This galaxy produces some line and you look at the spectrum. The line looks like this. Suppose if you take it as center, this is going towards the higher wavelength and this is going towards the lower wavelength, okay? 
So this is this part, and this is this part. This part has a spectrum where all the wavelengths are shifted towards higher wavelength. So what does it mean? If they are shifted towards higher wavelength means that part is going away or towards you? Away, right? And blue means towards. So it's interesting, if the whole thing is stationary, if all stars and all the things are stationary, wherever you take the spectrum, the line should appear at the same wavelength. Okay? This part, the wavelength is more. This part, the wavelength is less. Means what? This is rotating like this. This galaxy is rotating like this. The place when it is coming towards you, you will find blue. This part will be red. Here what happened? This part is going out. It is rotating like this, right? Imagine like this. So first thing we realized is that by doing the spectroscopy and with simple idea of Doppler, we can now say galaxies are rotating. Correct? So that is the first thing. So you understand, right? it's interesting. We say they are. So we will ask what is making them rotate? Okay, that's a good question to ask. So let's see how it should be. So again, what happened? Ideally, if you think of rotations which are happening, if you take one star, the star is rotating because of what? Because of all the gravitational force coming from the galaxy. All the mass and what is the distance? That will decide what is the speed at which the star will rotate. Okay. Interesting thing is that people actually plot distance from the center, distance from the center, what is the velocity? How velocity changes, how the speed changes as you move from distance to the outside. People found that this is how it is changing. The red color is the observed distribution of velocity. You understood, na? How much, if it is shifting in one way, we can calculate, na, velocity. What is the velocity at which it is shifting? But what one predicts, suppose you say that all the mass in this galaxy are residing in stars which we see, the stars which you are seeing have all the mass, then you can calculate what should be the speed at which different stars should move. That is like this. If, if, you, if you apply law given by Newton, and take all the stars and calculate mass of the stars and expect how the object should move as a function of distance. This is what is expected and what you are observing is this one. So what do you do? They are not same. There are two options for you. First option is to say, Newton is wrong. It's very easy to say, but he cannot be wrong. All ISRO satellites are going to the correct place because Newton is correct, right? The alternate explanation is, in a galaxy, the mass is not only in stars. There are huge amount of mass which is invisible. So this is the idea of what is known as dark matter, okay? The dark matter was needed just to explain the way stars are moving around this thing. So I'm going extremely slow. Can I take 10 more extra minutes or something? Is there, otherwise, I'll not finish any of this. The same exercise you can do closer to the center of a galaxy. Close to the center of the galaxy, you look at, take the spectrum of gas which is there and look at blue and again it is like this. So this is one of these M83 galaxy, you go and take a small region and start looking at how they are moving and you see that stars are moving violently. One part is moving towards, uh, towards you, another part is moving away from you very rapidly. This amount of rotation one sees in the center of galaxy is much, much higher than what you can see outside the galaxy. Then people want to figure out what is there. So then they said there are black holes. This is the way people found that in centers of every galaxy, there is supermassive black hole, which makes object go very fast. Is it true? One of the, one of the real direct example is in centers of our galaxy, where you can look at each star and keep taking photograph and see how they are moving as a function of time. In our galaxy, we can see these stars. And then one can actually come to conclusion that even these stars, they are moving under the influence of gravitational potential of a gravity of a super compact massive object, which we call black holes. So I just introduce you simple things, how to detect planets, how are we detecting uh, dark matter. Now we say we are detecting black hole, all with only one simple idea. Lines are created from atoms, the wavelengths are related to the motion, okay? Infall and outflow. So now at least you should know when somebody asks how black holes are detected, how dark matter is detected, you have some idea, okay? 
Let me just go quickly into this. Okay, the other thing one can do with the spectrum, which I already said, so I can move fast. You can look at the lines. The wavelength at which lines are coming, will you will know that which element is creating that line. Suppose if, if I go and look at the spectrum of a star, which has line coming from only hydrogen atom, what will be my conclusion? The star has only hydrogen. If I have a star, which is also producing absorption lines of carbon, nitrogen, whatever you can think of, sodium, magnesium, zinc, chromium, then you know that this, so you can actually do the composition and studying composition is, a, is another topic, which is one of my favorite topics. This is what I work on, how to, it's like chemist, you understand how these elements are created, how they are distributed, etc. So I will just uh, leave you from here. We will not go into the, this I already explained to you. So in some regions, if you look at, you find these dark patches. In, in some region, you took, take images, you see dark patches. There are two options of this. One option is that somebody went there and cleaned up all the stars, so that there are no stars there. Another option is that star is there, there is a monster cloud in front, which is removing all the light, like the way it happens early morning and evening in, in our Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is like that. That means things should look red. So in the same region, if I go and make a deep image in red color, I should see them, that's what is here. If you go and do the deep images in red color, you see the stars there. So this is another thing which we talked about, which is what is known as dust. So dust is another important thing, which has a important consequence to us because understanding how gases are there is easy to understand in, in astrophysics. But how to form dust means a solid particle. That means you are making different atoms to join into form some structures. So this is very difficult. So detecting these things in space is very exciting. And then one can understand how these structures are created. Consequence of this is that these structures in a complex situation is what will lead to our life. For example, you know benzene, uh, our, uh, our biological sequences can start from simple structures like benzenes and what, what is known as aromatic hydrocarbons, which, which are simple structures, uh, biological structures, or you can think of like graphites and uh, silicates, these are like uh, layers of solid structures. Detecting them is very interesting. In fact, you can detect with spectroscopy. This is what is example I am showing here. These are emission which are seen in some of these uh, uh, stars. And this can be used to actually say at what kind of temperatures and what kind of composition one can have these structures. Because this is very important building block. At least you have to form them before forming life. Okay, so that's it. Okay, I'll, I'll just go quickly now into a couple of these slides. So, Actually, spectra of galaxies are also very different. If you take an elliptical galaxy, the spectrum will look something like this. There will be no emission lines which are clearly visible. Whereas if you go to the uh, spiral or irregular galaxies, you will start seeing emission lines. So, so spectrum actually changes depending upon what kind of light and what kind of composition of galaxies which are there. So like the way I explained to you about stars, one can also look at each features in the spectrum and decide what kind of galaxy it is, what kind of objects it is possessing. So I have two more things to explain to you and afterwards we will finish my lecture, okay. The first thing is related to what is done by Hubble. So what Hubble did, this is the last experiment related to the velocities. So we have found these velocities of moving thing now. You, we use this to find uh, binaries, we use it to find planets, we use it to say dark matter, we use it to find black holes. The last thing one of the applications at the largest distance is to understand about our own universe. What Hubble did was, he looked at galaxies at different, different distances. These are the distances given. And he considered similar set of lines, okay. What he found was, when you look at uh, galaxies which are further and further and further away, the lines are shifted more and more towards red direction. So it was puzzling. So what is the conclusion? Red means these galaxies are going away from us. Correct? Going away from us. And the further the galaxy, it is moving faster. Okay? So what could be the reason? Because all galaxies don't like us. Right? The other poss possibility is that we are the center of the universe because everything is going away from us. So usually it is good for politicians and human beings to like, like this way. I am the great guy. 
I am the center of this thing. Physicists won't like that. If you find one special place, one special thing, that means there is problem. We would like to generalize everything, right? So how do you understand this? So this is an important finding by Hubble. Hubble found that object appear to move faster when they are farther from us. It is called appear to move, okay? So appear to move means velocity. So we have to understand what is the velocity. So the basic idea behind is something like this. Okay, I think uh, this slide is okay. I will give you an example of, uh, example, a simple example of what is the velocity. How do you mean? So I, 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 I keep my two fingers like this. I move here. Can you calculate what is the velocity at which I moved? You can, na? You take, you take your stop clock, start it and find out how much I moved. And you have a scale which tells me how much I am moving. So you can calculate velocity, correct? So if velocity is given, it will decide whether to go blue or red by what amount. But I have a slightly different experiment. I am keeping my two fingers. My, I also fix my scale with my finger. The scale is a rubber, okay? So I do like this. This time I find one meter, suppose. And you stop your, you start your stop clock. I move like this. So you think distance is increased. I look at my scale, it says one meter. It doesn't change at all. Because the scale I am using is rubber, which is also moving with me. Okay? So if you ask me what is the velocity, I will say zero, because nothing has changed. You are saying what you will see. You will see something has changed. So this is exactly what happens in an expanding universe. If you, this is the example shown here. You take a bub, uh, take a balloon. Don't look at the, don't look at the squares. Just look at this sine wave which is there. This balloon has become bigger. Wavelength is between. Wavelength can be measured between two peaks, right? Going from one peak to another peak, or one trough to another trough will give you wavelength. Okay. Now tell me what happened here. Is it same, this curve looks same or different? Different, right. But if I put the grid, with respect to the grid, is it changed? No. no. So this is what precisely you have to remember. The way the wavelength change occur in, in universe was understood by saying that universe is expanding and we are frozen in that. The wavelengths are frozen in that universe, right? Imagine whatever photons we are creating, they are in the universe. When the universe expand, in that frame, like the scale we said, nothing is changing. So the universe was smaller in the past. Suppose imagine the universe was smaller in the past and it has become bigger now. The anything which was smaller there would have appeared bigger today. You understand? So this is what is known as cosmological redshift. This is a very deep idea. So you don't say there are for two reasons when we are looking at the results of Hubble, we never said that galaxies are going away from us at higher speed. One reason is whatever I said, physicists would like to not make us special. Second thing is that to move a car at 50 uh, kilometer per hour, how much work you have to do? Hey na? Car ke itna. Can you make a sun move? Now it is stable. Na? If it wants to move with one kilometer per hour, will it be possible? But you want to make it move very high speed, is it possible? No. Because energetically, these are not possible, okay? This is why people thought about it, and this lead to an interesting consequence saying that the galaxies which are far away, now you see, I am going to connect to whatever we said before. Galaxies which are far away, I am looking at it today, that light would have started long time back, okay? When the light has started long time back, the universe was smaller, it took so much time for light to travel from there to me. By the time it reached to me, the universe has become bigger. Same experiment like this, what I did, okay? So the amount of shift you see, suppose a line is shifted by some amount, it is not reflecting the speed at which the galaxy is moving. Rather, it is telling what was the size of the universe when the photon started from that point and today, relative size. If the size has changed by factor two, the wavelength will change by factor two. Actually, two plus one, three times, okay? So this scaling one can do. So now you understood, na? The, the way we are going to understand 
the uh, Hubble constant is that the galaxies appear to move away from us. Further the galaxy, the time taken for light to come from there to us is larger. Moving away is nothing but wavelength being stretched. So if light takes a lot of time to travel, it is travel, traveling from a smaller universe into a bigger universe. Universe is also changing. Okay? This is the basic, is my experiment like I am changing, my scale is also changing. So I don't see anything, but you are seeing it because you are sitting there. You are not evolving. So I hope this gives you an idea. This is what is used to, used to do whatever we call, uh, uh, understand the cosmology. That means larger shift of wavelengths, that means you are picking galaxies from further and further and further and further away. So it is, it is the very interesting uh, concept. This is what you use to build the whole history of the universe, starting from very small universe, you can build. So if you are interested, probably when you are around, uh, if you end up staying in science, and if you are in master's or BSc, you should come and attend summer school or visiting students program at Ayuka, where you will learn all these things thoroughly. How, because now it may appear magic, but you can start deriving from scratch and get whatever concept I am telling in, in a hand waving way. Okay, last bit I wanted to say is that if you go to very distant universe, you see that we talk about stars and we talk about galaxies, but it is also interesting that lot of, uh, lot of things are in between these galaxies. How do you know it is there? This is done with these experiments. Whenever you look at a distant star, actually I move an object called quasars. Quasars can be seen to very large distances. When you look at these quasars, you see that their spectrum is filled with huge amount of absorption lines. The idea behind is that this tells you that not only matter, see we talked about dark matter. Similarly, we can also identify that when you look at very distant object, when the light coming from that distant object towards you, it picks up lot of signals in the medium in between us and that one. So I just have a small movie to show you. I hope it runs. After that, we'll stop. So you see that blue color is the photon, which is coming. When it moves, you see that you will start seeing signatures because of whatever is present here. There is a galaxy through which it will go at some stage. But it depicts that even between galaxies, in between galaxies, there are a lot of gas. And this gas plays an important role in, in deciding our universe itself. This goes by the name intergalactic matter. Nearly 80% of the matter is present there. Okay? Now when it goes through the galaxy, you will start seeing a big absorption line produced by the galaxy and a lot of other signals which are created. So I'm just giving you a, a, a simulation of uh, whatever one can think of. The idea here is that first we talked about emission, absorption, property of the gas, motion. We can also use imprints of material in between to study a lot of things. Okay. The analogy of this is a bit like the way uh, Americans caught uh, Bin Laden. They didn't look at Bin Laden directly. They didn't have any information. They went and looked at the dustbin there and they figured out that there is some activity going on. Medicine is going on. This is there. right? And also, if, uh, if uh, uh, what is that, uh, COVID was there, amount of COVID spread was detected based on what is there in, in, uh, in our, uh, what is that called, uh, savage uh, water. So they analyze by analyzing this. Exactly like this, what is happening in the whole universe, you don't have to look at all galaxies. You can look at what happens in the material. These are like dump yards. You can look at these things and you can develop a lot of insight into this. This is again, this is one of the key research areas in, Astro in, in, in Ayuka where people uh, do this. Okay, I will finish with some positive notes. These kind of things, exercise, if you want to do, you need to do it with very large telescopes. It is, it is, we cannot do it with small telescopes because the objects which you are detecting cannot be seen with our eye. They are billions of times fainter than what we can detect with our eye. So now India is investing in couple of big projects. One is what is known as 30 meter telescope, which is uh, going to be in Hawaii, which is India will have 10%. So when you become astronomers, unlike me, you don't have to worry about where will I get my next data. You have right to go to the biggest telescope in the world available to our country. This is major development which has happened in the last 10 years. Similarly, we are all used to GMRT. So if you imagine going to 20 times the GMRT or maybe 50 times the GMRT potential, that is what is going to be square kilometer array. This is again, uh, we are part of and uh, you will have direct access to taking data. This is not possible now. World's biggest telescope, Indians have no direct access. 
So we have one telescope for which Ayuka has little bit access, but uh, this is not the most sophisticated telescope one can think of. The situation will completely different in next decade where you will have direct access to all these things. Okay, so of course, this is what I want to say. I will stop here. Thank you so much. Sorry, I took little more time because I went slow in my introduction. You told us the whole story of the universe from close to far of objects and how they can be, uh, details about them can be learned through this simple method uh, called spectroscopy. So, uh, many thanks again to you for making it so concise and so easy and easily accessible to us. We also actually have some demos, so uh, let's, let's wait a bit. In the, in the meanwhile, you can think of maybe a question or two which can be asked to sir while you prepare the demonstration of how you yourself can also study spectra. This is at your level. So, then when you get to a higher level, if your interest increases in into this lecture or some other explanation, you can then proceed to use other bigger spectroscopes, maybe use the bigger telescopes and their spectroscopes. Right now, we are going to show you some spectroscopes. In fact, one of the uh, uh, one of the outreach events that we have here are some workshops, astronomy, physics, etc. So we request that the teacher should get in touch with us. We don't just want to bring friends, students. We want to bring the whole class here. So welcome. Uh, we have a science center that we have this auditorium where you can have a group of uh, students coming in. The whole class can come. We can have a longer time discussion, one hour, two hour, also do some hands on activities and maybe also need some uh, some demos, uh, spectroscopes. This is a spectroscope made out of this out of paper, uh, you know, some folds of paper and a CD. If you have that CD, it's usually. You also can actually make it out of a small matchbox so we can tell you how you can do this. Carry a spectroscope in your pocket and just look at any light source and you can see its spectrum. So we are going to show you some spectrum here. Sparing the thing. Now you can see this lovely demo here. You are seeing yourself. <laughs> well, you are not bright enough to give a spectrum. But the lights there are. And you can see that with a, something called a grating, okay, which is the, no, it's used instead of a prism, it's more effective in producing spectrum. So we can actually produce spectra of any light source. So what is this grating being used? It is a set of lines etched on a transparent medium, very, very uh, close, close to each other. Okay, and due to a uh, effect called diffraction, they are producing this spectrum. So uh, that's why a CD can also be used for that because CDs also have a lot of lines densely packed together, and it can act as a diffraction grating. Uh, so, but we have a professional grating, and we, we, we are going to show you some uh, spectra here. So, uh, it's and it's been used with a mobile phone, as you can see that. We have a CFL lamp, okay? These lamps are going obsolete now because of the containing composition, but that they are very nice to see the spectrum. And this is the spectrum. You see, it's not a continuous spectrum. So, you can see there are lines. Okay, this is basically the image, multiple images of the small slit we have made so that the light can come through. Otherwise, it will be the image of the whole bulb. So, you can see it's not a continuous spectrum because this bulb has some chemicals in it. Okay, and those atoms are, are charged by the, by the current passing through it and they are going up in the lift. And then coming down, giving out the same light that they absorb in the beginning, okay, the energy that they absorb in the beginning. So you can see, and uh, the CD spectroscope that we have also basically mentions which wavelength, which color uh, belongs to which atom. Okay, so if you make one of these, you will also have a comparison, a reference. Okay, uh, so unfortunately, we don't have too much time to do that here for you all to try it out. Okay. But we can do a quick thing which uh, showed us the spectrum of let's do with the hydrogen. Let's do with the hydrogen. With the hydrogen. Okay. So you see, uh, this is a spectrum we are trying to show you of uh, hydrogen. It's not very bright, but you can see there's there's a blue line and and some uh, bits in the red. Let's go to neon. So neon is a completely different. 
it's got very bright red lights okay and that's why this neon lamp is red because it's giving out only reddish hues and then there's a i think it's a combination mercury lamp mm. it's it's looking more white because it's got red blue green yellow all these sets of lines which combine together to give you white lamp okay. so therefore that combination is better to produce bulbs other than a hydrogen or uh, neon but there were also used to be sodium lamps on the streets you might have uh, you might remember few years back which were only yellow and later when you went to uh, you know higher studies in practical classes you have sodium lines which appear only in yellow when sodium atoms are excited they only uh, absorb yellow or they give out yellow so that's why sodium lamps were that's why those lamps are called sodium because they are called they got sodium vapor inside those bulbs and the charge produces that so a small demo for you and we invite you to come to ayurveda throughout the year we are open and you can uh, schedule a workshop with us any time Email ID is cybo@gmail.com. It's already not here, not you. Uh, just share it with us, and we can have a more involved uh, and more hands-on kind of uh, event day. So thank you. We will now uh, go on to the questions. So please keep it relevant to this talk, particularly to spectroscopy if you can. Uh, raise your hand and we'll help you. Uh, okay, we can start with you. Tema. Sir, when a star expands, then we know the expansion period. Then when our sun is in yellow color, when it will expand, we call it a red giant. So why it is not in violet or blue? <laughs> Yeah, 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 it is expanding. So when you ex you start expanding because something is happening, but when you expand, you actually cool. Because the idea is that you have some energy which is up to this volume. When you expand, the same energy goes to a larger volume. So energy per unit volume will go down. So whenever some object become bigger without additional energy, it will appear red. That's why it is called red giant. It to giant when it becomes very big, it will become red. Why does this happen? So, uh, okay. It is happening because of, first I will answer proper physics answer. It is happening because of difference in frames. Rest frame versus moving frame, you have to, there is some difference. But if you simply want to understand as a layman, let's say, let's take a spring, okay? You keep a spring with you, I keep a spring, spring with me. I move away, spring gets stretched. If I come towards you, spring gets skewed. This is not the correct way to understand, but you understand, na? So if you imagine wavelength is like that, you move away, it is stretched. I, I don't want to say this, but uh, <laughs> this, is, this will give you intuition. So this is what happens when you do the uh, motion, relative motion. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are few. No, no, uh, blue shifted means uh, basically with respect to us. I mean, this is this is basically a luck. See, you have to say this. Other way of saying is that we are falling into Andromeda. For example, in, instead of we living here, if we are living in Andromeda, we would have seen our galaxy blue shifted towards it. Uh, Hubble was extremely lucky. That's it. I will say. <laughs> no, but in other places we see. For example, exam. If you take a cluster of galaxies, you will. You all of them belong to uh, at the same distance only, right? With us. If you take galaxy cluster, it means a group of galaxies which are close to each other. In that case, you will see that some galaxies will be moving towards you, some galaxies will be moving away from you. As a group, they will move away from you all together, but within them, you will see some of them moving inward and outward. So that is seen. So there is no problem. But it, it, I must say that uh, Hubble was slightly lucky to have most of them pre predominantly going.
the video that you show. Uh, so after it passes through the gas cloud, once the sun has dropped in the amount of energy, the gas cloud is absorbing this absorption. Right? And also you see this uh, lines are all shifting. I didn't explain to you since uh, the light is coming from far away. Uh, uh, universe, since universe is expanding, you ap appear as if lines are expanding. That's why all the lines are moving. And the same atom producing absorption, when it is a different location, it will produce a different, different places. So that's the, I didn't explain this part. Otherwise, whenever it passes through the gas cloud, you see something is removed by the gas cloud. This is absorption. And this wavelength is shifting because with respect to that point and us, there is some travel time. Thank you. One last question from Prema, please pass it on to her. Good morning, sir. Uh, my question is that if we choose the field of astrophysics, what studies we have to do and what exams we have to do? Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, do astrophysics for what? As for life, as a scientist. Yeah. So astrophysics is interesting. If you ask the same question in some other topic, they may have a definite answer. In astrophysics, only thing you need is the curiosity to know about our universe. Okay. And study mathematics, study physics, fine. Suppose you don't like physics, study chemistry, fine. If you don't like any of this thing, do engineering, it is fine. <laughs> if you do computing, it is fine. So this is what is astrophysics, the instrumentation which I showed, the future instrumentation which we are going to have, 30 meter telescope, requires as many engineers as as many physicists. LIGO India, which we are building, it requires vacuum engineers, which requires laser technology. So that engineering, if you are interested in knowing about the secret of universe, you can contribute to it by being any person. No need to clear one exam, but curiosity you keep. That is the thing which is important. <laughs>